Ursula, when Beatrice's death come, as we do trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be of Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than man ever did merit. My talk to thee must be of how Benedict is sick in love with Beatrice. Of this matter is little Cupid's crafty arrow made that only wounds by hearsay. Now begin. For look where Beatrice is a lapwing, runs close to the ground to hear our conference. The pleasant angling is to see the fish cut with the golden oar as the silver stream, and greedily devour the treacherous bait. So angle we for Beatrice, who even now is couched in the wood of fine coverture. Fear him not, my part of the dial. Then when we go near her, that her ear leaves nothing of the false sweet bait that we lay for her. No, truly, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggards in the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? So says the prince in my new trothed lord. Did they bid you to tell her of it, madam? They did entreat me to acquaint her of it, but I persuaded them that if they loved Benedict, to wish him restless affection, and never let Beatrice know of it. Why did you so? Doubt not the gentleman deserve as full as fortune a bed as ever Beatrice shall, couch, shall couch upon? Oh, God of love, I know he doth deserve as much as may be yielded from a man. But nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that of Beatrice. Disdain and scorn ride in her sparkling eyes. Misprising that they look on in her wit, Valis did sigh so highly that her all matter seems else weak. She cannot love, nor take no shape, nor project of affection. She is so self endeared Sure I think so, and therefore certainly it were not good. She knew his love, we shall make sport at it. Why, you speak the truth. I never yet saw a man, how wise, how noble, young, how rarely featured. But she was spelled backward. If far fact, she would swear the gentleman would be her sister. If black, why nature drawing of an antic made a foul blot. If tall, lance ill-headed. If low, in a dot very wildly cut. If speaking, why a vein blowing with all the winds. If silent, why a block moved with none. So turns she every man the wrong side out, and never gives to truth and virtue that which stimulus and merit purchase. Sure, sure, such carping is not commendable. No, not to be so odd, and from all fashions, as Beatrice is, cannot be commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into air. Oh, she would laugh me out of myself, press me to death with wit. Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in size, waste inwardly. It were a better death than to die with mocks, which is as bad as die with tickling. Yes, tell her of it. Hear what she will say. No, rather I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion, and truly I'll devise some honest slanders to stain my cousin with. One doubt not know how much ill word may impose liking. Oh, do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit. As she is prized to have, as to refuse, so rare a gentleman as Signor Benedict. He is the only man of Italy, always accepted, my dear Claudio. I pray you not to be angry with me, madam. Speaking my fancy, Signor Benedict, for shape, for bearing, argument, and valor, goes foremost in report through Italy. Indeed, he hath an excellent good name. His excellence did earn it, ere he had it. What are you married, madam? Why, every day tomorrow, come, go in, I'll show you these summer tires, and have thy counsel, which is the best to furnish me tomorrow. She's weak, I warrant you, we have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by halves. Some keep it close with arrow, some with traps. <coughs> Why, every day tomorrow... What the heck? <laughs> Selfie. Hey, go. Yes,